Hello everybody, welcome back. This is part three of video editing for beginners using Premiere Pro. Now that we have kind of laid our clips uh, in the order that we want on our timeline, it's time to add some transitions and color correction to bring the video to life. Now I'm gonna try to keep this video a little bit brief when it comes to color correction. We're gonna go on the basic route because there is so much that you could do with color correcting and color grading that really changes the mood and the tone of the video and the storytelling. It's a huge aspect uh, for a video. Now, uh, there is more in-depth, you know, tutorials and information about color grading and color correction. And lynda.com, once again, is a very great source for this. Um, because, like I said, there's so many things that goes into it than just what I'm about to show you here on Premiere Pro. So, I've kind of already... Uh, tweaked the timeline a little bit with this video. Nothing major from the last uh, part that I showed you guys. Um, all I did was kind of also trim the, the audio because as you can see, it's kind of on beat with everything with the video itself. And that's that. Maybe at the end, you know, I'll just put some text that says coffee or something like that. Now, something that you'll notice uh, here and throughout each clip is that the footage is kind of flat, meaning there's not much color to it. It's kind of desaturated is what we would call it. Um, there's not much range of tones here between light and dark colors, so there's really not much contrast either. So we have to fix that, and the way we fix that is, is through color correcting. So at the top here, you can see there's a workspace for color. Right now, I'm in my designated editing one uh, preset workspace that I created the last time. But now I'm past editing that we're just going to go to color. You can also access this by going to effects. And you can type up, you know, brightness and contrast. You can go more in depth and see all the different types of color options that you have. But I love the Lumetri color panel. It's very easy to use. And here, something else that you'll see, you'll look, you're looking at it and it's, it looks very confusing. But I'm going to try to simplify a little bit. All it is is these are graphs or histograms and different scopes that show in this image, in this clip, where the color ranges are. So as you can see here, you can kind of see that they're all balanced out. Now let's go to this clip. Let's click on that. And you can tell that the red kind of goes higher in most cases. But they're kind of balanced. It's just that there's no color. There's not much color. As you can see, the lights and darks, uh, they, they're, there's not a spread of them that much. Now, for example, if I start to mess with this, you can see how the blue on the RGB scale just shoots up. We don't want that. We're not going for this cold looking, you know, mood or tone in our clip. If anything, we'd want it a little bit more on the other end. But let me explain this for you guys a little bit. So this is the Lumetri color panel. Here we have full ranges of uh, Lumetri scopes that we can mess around with. Uh, and it's this setup right here, it's pretty ergonomic. And again, it's all versatile and flexible within Premiere and you can do what you'd like to do with it. Now, the main thing, the basic thing is this basic correction and it says it right here, basic. All it is, is you have your temperature color. Temperature color is like, you would have probably heard of indoor lighting and outdoor lighting, you know, or daylight lighting, you know what I mean? So on the left spectrum of it, we have the blue, uh, cool tone, cool colors, which is generally described as indoor lighting. And this is all color temperature, you know, and like 
Kelvin. So that would be like 3200 Kelvin. On the very end of this right here, you have the yellow tone. This is a warm tone. This is, would be like on a hot summer day, uh, a warm you know, environment that is basically daylight lighting. So like 5600 Kelvins. Now we're not actually just going to 3200 and 5600. This is a whole spectrum of it. It's all range that you could mess with. So if something is very warm, maybe I want a little bit cooler. Maybe the setting for this video is, you know, somewhere up north where it's colder. So you really have to think about that and what you want. I'm just gonna, you can also just click on it and type zero. And this is just how it looks right now. Now there's exposure, and this is just brightness, just color. It's very sensitive. So like you probably never would really even go one for this kind of footage. You can see here it's overexposed a bit too much. So maybe I would just do like a point two. This all, I know even a little bit more. This all is like up to you. This coloring, you know, there's a way to do it properly that fits your video and makes it look better and also makes it represent the story. But it's subjective to you. Um, that's why I'm gonna go through some of these and show you what you can do, but then I'm just gonna do it all and show you the, the, the after look, you know. So here, you have exposure, that's brightness. Contrast, you know, basically the luminance of an object or the subject in this case, you know, the coffee, the hand, how much light there is. So it's the difference between the lightest and darkest tones. And uh, at the bottom here is saturation, and that's the, unlike contrast, that is the intensity of a color. So once you have it, how intense do you want that color? So contrast and saturation, which you can find uh, down here as well, and right here. You can see if I mess around with it, the intensity of that warm color just shoots up as I go up, and you could see it reflect in the scopes as well on my left. You go all the way down, you remove the color. So we want it at a nice spot. Again, it's a lot of it is subjective, but also in some cases, there's aspects of it that are objective, like looking at the histograms and the RGB curves and all of that, you know, trying to balance that out. So for this, I'm just going to, the highlights and whites are basically the overexposed, you know, light you would get from sun or something like that. For example, if I dim it down, there is l less light. White is strictly the white, you know, just like that. You see how overexposed it is? And it only does in areas where there is highlights white areas, whereas exposure is the whole image. See that? In some cases, it's so overexposed in an image, or I mean a footage, that you really have to dumb it down very low. Like if there's a window in the background or something like that, you know, you might want to uh, increase the exposure on the image, but you want to bring down the highlights and the white so that it's not fully dark, but the window isn't overexposed. It just looks bad. Shadows are just the shadows, the dark spot. Usually it gives it more of a vivid look, which in some cases I like, like maybe that's a good amount. And blacks is just all the blacks. I don't like to mess with it that much because giving some noise or some uh, less intensity of black color on here makes it look realistic. As you can see here, when I bring it down too much, it looks very contrasty, like only on the black side, on the black color, and just doesn't look realistic. It looks like someone's played around with it and they don't know what they're doing. You know what I mean? So I don't mess with it that much. Only if it's very flat and very like faded, the color's faded, then maybe I would bring it down a little bit more. Like if the black needs to look like black rather than a noise, um, a noise black or a gray. And by noise, I mean like grain. But even then, it doesn't really look that great. I like, here's actually one thing I want to talk about real quick. So with Lometri, there's, and any basically video photo editing software, there's these things called a LUT. Now, a lot of, the, a lot of those LUTs you can find online for free. But 
Premiere Pro has some of its own here, and all it does is give you a whole preset of a color, an image for your video. So this is like this kind of camera, a Fuji camera. This is going to be very moody, like blue. You can mess with these and take a look at them. You can also sift through them here, and then once you click on there, you can adjust the intensity and everything. They don't look bad, but they don't always, they're not perfect. You know, like, there's like kind of black and white, and you can increase it, and it's just black and white, like when I just desaturated the entire image. It's the same thing. I don't really like messing with them unless I have my own or I find a really good LUT online, which there are a lot of free ones and a lot that you can just purchase. And they're usually really good because people have take, taken their time and they understand color grading, you know, more than you or more than me. So it's easier to just get it that way. And it's time efficient too. Here's the same thing. You could adjust the hue based on how high the intensity is. You'll see it. It's like that. You can even bend it, increase it. Now this is just the hue. And the vertical is just the saturation. As you can see, when I go low, the color kind of begins to wash out. But in this one, you know, the color basically stays the same in most areas. You don't really see it. We kind of have a good structure from the basic. And this is intensity of that hue. I never really do this because, as you can see, it completely changes the color, but it changes it everywhere. There's no, there's no depth to the, to the color ranges that you do, so I never mess with that. And this is you, but also with the brightness. So as we change the color, not much is being changed because we have a very kind of uh, controlled color range here. But you can see that the light brightness, luminance is what it is, adjusts as we go up and down. And same with this. Saturation, and these are basically the same as well, saturation. And all these are reflective in how your image is or footage is in the first place, you know what I mean? So for this, I'm going to go back here a little bit, and I'm going to increase it just by a bit to three. You can see here is a tint. It's kind of like a hue, but it's only two ranges of color, pink and green. I don't like to mess with it that much. I just put it there. I'm going to increase the contrast because, as I said, it's pretty flat. Just like that. And to me, that looks pretty good compared. And you don't really see the difference because you're working with it. But my favorite thing is you can always just go to effect controls, turn it off, and see that before and after. See what I mean? And then I just keep doing this for all of them. And you also have other options like a vignette. You know vignette is like a, a shadow around your frame that kind of just creeps in. You, I can show it to you here. I never really do it, but you can see how this is like a frame. It's nice depending on the video. Like, it, like this reminds me of a Christmas video or like it's a winter video, winter time. Um, you can basically do more options and dig deeper into it. But I don't like a vignette. As you go up, it's white. When you go down, it's black. Yeah, this is kind of what you get. I see a lot of, especially in photos, you know, just to crop it in, put these shadows in there. It gives it more depth. Again, I'm not a fan of it. I'm just going to uncheck it. You can uncheck anything. You can see that and you can see what you've done in each kind of section and this we did a little bit with that saturation I remember so that's why um, I have some effects on there and that's basically coloring it's that easy um, not just easy obviously there's a lot to it but it's that customizable which is very nice so another thing you guys can do is you can also control C or command C, go to the next one and control V. Now obviously this one, they don't have similar color ranges, especially here, it's much darker. 
but I imagine maybe here, there we go. It's not bad. Now let me just say one more thing about that highlight. You see how here it's so blown out? Look at that. And then I could increase this. Bring down the whites. Bring that up. Okay, now purposely this footage was meant to have it be blown out there. That's why, because we're focusing on what's happening here. It's creating some dimension, whoever shot this, you know? But you can tell the difference. The only thing is probably I would even bring down the contrast a little bit. You know? And up the warmth tone just a little bit. I usually like to input my numbers if I have an idea of how they're going to show up if it's too much or too little. Just that. You know? But... If you have similar similar footage with the similar col uh, sim similar lighting, just control C and control V, copy and paste it, and then adjust it. You know, just saves you some time. So the next thing we're I'm going to show you real quick is just how to add uh, video effects, or like in this case, video transitions. Uh, for something like this, I don't really use like to use much of Premiere's effects or transitions, especially since the cuts are pretty seamless and they're good on their own because they're cutting to the beat of the song. So I would just leave it like this, but just to show you guys, I will I'll, I will go through some of the video transitions that Premiere has as a default. Now usually, I just like LUTs, I like to find uh, transitions online that people have made into presets, which you can see here. Um, like this one and this one, I've got, I've found them online and a few other ones. They're, they just much nicer, you know, um, much more advanced too. But I didn't do them, someone else would have done that. And But you can make your own as well and save it as a preset. Now one of my favorite that I like to do, and you guys have probably seen it, heard of it, or even done it before, is just cross dissolve. You just put it in between two clips. Or even just the one clip, it's fine, but it depends. You can adjust it however you want. And just like that. It's like it's like a fade. You know, it's it's simple. It's one of my favorite. Just like that. It goes into the next one. And because this is such on a slow beat, um, they're not sped up anything, it's kinda it, it kind of fits. Just like that. And you can extend it to make it last longer, as you can see here. You guys have probably seen a lot of films or shows or something or documentaries where they basically just dissolve into each other and take their time. So someone's face might be here while the next scene is here or something. I like quick cuts. And that's just, again, subjective. What I like, just like that. You know, uh, another thing that I love, which again, I will not work in this video because I want it to cut to the beat or fade, I guess, dip to the beat. And that is a dip to black um, effect. And all that is, sometimes if you can't find it right away, I just, I know what they are, so I just type them in. You bring it in here. This is basically a fade, as you can see, just like that. And you can extend it definitely to make it longer. And these effects are also in here. You can have it start at different times, usually with something like cross dissolve or between two, two footage. I always have it start um, like in the center. So, and I, I like to have them like just five frames, but it's all up to you. As you can see, I was extending it on my own. So the duration just shows up on here. And that's basically how you guys insert um, video transitions. There's so many things that you can do and you can find, you know, I like these presets that I found online. Um, I also like the film dissolve. I'll just put it here. It doesn't show that much. It's basically a cross dissolve. You know what I mean? But the next footage is the one behind. So it's the background and the previous footage is in the foreground. But they're basically fading into each other. And another thing, you don't this is all keyframed. This is keyframes that are saved into presets. So I could legit go here in the beginning of this footage and I could keyframe the opacity to be zero. 
as you can see. Obviously, it's not cross dissolved, but this would be a fade in. And then I could just go a little bit here, a few seconds, a few frames, and then keyframe this at 100. You see? And then I could even go in here and I could uh, press uh, plus on my keyboard to zoom in. And I could extend this to make it longer. Same thing with the dip to black. That was exactly what we did just in the other uh, opposite side, which was we had it at 100 and then, you know, brought the opacity, keyframed it to zero. And yeah, that's basically it. This video is coming along. I'm just going to um, add more of these color corrections to the rest of the footage, and then we should be good to go for this fourth and last video of this uh, series, and that's exporting. You know, there's more to it than just hitting export and finalizing everything into like an MP4, because if you know um, where this video is gonna be going, you can kind of plan ahead for it through here to maximize the output the best you can and the quality, basically. So that will be it for the next, for this video. Um, don't forget that if you go to lynda.com and you use your Poplar Creek library card, you have it for free with hundreds of different skills and videos and courses that you could learn about video production and many other things. Uh, more of a deep dive into color correction, color grading, more into transitions and effects. There's so much that you could do for lynda.com and because you are a Poplar Creek public library patron, you have it all for free. Thank you guys, and we'll see you in the next and last video.